Hancock Chronicles 5, maybe? Watch the previous ones, I won't keep recapping, let's save time. So, today I'm going to concentrate on killing that wasp. No, not killing it, get out! <laughs> the lead I got a couple of episodes ago, the girl in Pantit Plaza, who had the phone, little phone, works in the phone shop, pointed me to an area and I said Sam Peng, Kom Tong. Now, I'll try and put a map up and zoom in a bit. Chinatown, which is now known as Yawarad. Chinatown comprises of just one main street, then streets off that, and that is Chinatown. It's over towards the river, sort of uh, Ceylon way, Pat Pong way. The main street in Chinatown is mainly hotels, cafes, and because it's Chinatown, a lot of it is related to the shark fin soup and the shark bits and the med medicinal food and uh, all that mumbo jumbo. So the main street is hotels, cafes, gold shops, loads of gold shops. Maybe I'll do a video on that. Um, and then the odd little shop selling bits and pieces. And the road runs, when it gets to the top, there's a canal, a bit of a humpback bridge. And right at the bottom is a humpback bridge over a canal. Now the canals, again, it'll come in another video. Watch for that one. Good tips. So that was the main Chinatown. To the left of the road, so centre of Bangkok's behind me, to the left of the road is called Sampeng, that's that district. It also comes on the other side of the top half, Sampeng, and it was called Sampeng uh, Sam um, and which was left, Sampeng left, and uh, Kwa, Sampeng Kwa, uh, right. There was a, at the top, in San Panolet, that zone, huge, well, to, it's about three square miles, uh, San Peng and Com Tom, but the top section was computer games, computer playstations, Xboxes, those sort of consoles. And there was then the section for remote control aeroplanes, cars, helicopters, remote control spares, today drones and drone spares. Just that one big section, and I'll, we'll get onto that on another. Below that section was coming down in behind, the, so <laughs> it's hard to try and explain it all. But the main Chinatown road was, as I say, hotels and all the bits but there was alleyways all the way up both sides of the road. And then there was even, there was roads as well. But every single one of those alleyways had more little alleyways. It was like caves. You'd walk into one alleyway and it would go left and right and you'd, you'd totally get lost. But all the way down the right and left is sections. The further back you go, the cheaper it gets. So we had the computer stuff at the top. The next section was the start of watches, which went through to Comtom. Next section were knives, karate weapons, um, nunchucks, and all the sort of clothing for martial arts. And then there was torches, and there were key rings and lighters. There was this knick-knack section. Then you came down, and it was all cafes and Chinatown stuff. But then you go on the other side of the road <laughs> and at the top left it was just cafes by the canal then it just goes for miles there is clocks key ring clocks anything to do with clocks they're stationary huge amounts of stationary zones um, sunglasses now there is a big topic in the one side and in the whole of Bangkok that one section 
was the cheapest place I found unless you were prepared to buy a thousand pairs at a time that was the sun I'll give you an example that was the sunglass section you could buy the counterfeit replica Ray-Ban sunglasses in there for 20 baht which back then was 30 pence but there was also sunglasses section then for the ladies handbags now handbags Let, let's talk about handbags I'm a guy but I know all about handbags trust me from my wife we've kept mentioning the counterfeit products and I've briefly mentioned homage on the watches so watches that look like the real thing but are legally nothing written on them that's the same as the real thing but looks similar they pay homage same with handbags so back then the um, trend was Louis Vuitton and Louis Vuitton handbags now in this section in Sam Penn for all over Bangkok everywhere you went there were Louis Vuitton replica handbags everywhere Pat Pong market one of those replica ladies Louis Vuitton would cost you 2,000 baht Sukhumvit Road at night on the side of the road it would cost you 1,500 baht Pratinam market if you found them it would be a thousand baht Chatter Chat market that's the one I forgot the other video the biggest market in Bangkok the one where the bus loads of tourists go you'd be 2,000 baht in there for those handbags Sam Peng providing you bought three 300 baht each if you wanted the counterfeit ones but then and this was a, a beauty for me later on in my time the same bags the, the replicas the color wasn't copyrighted so they were the brown bags with the square darker brown lighter brown the color and the piping was not copyrighted by Louis Vuitton the only thing copyrighted was the zips the clasp all the clasps on the outside the hinges on the handles um, and obviously the logo stuck on the back in fact the logo wasn't on the bags they were just putting a V if I remember or an L and a V but it was the way it was put it was copyrighted but in there clever people they were buying the bags from wherever the factory was making them but without the LV sign on the front or without the hinges with the LV written on it looked the same but no LV number no look they had a square badge on the front with just L or an IV so it's <laughs> from a distance it looked like the the real thing but it was different lettering very clever but it was homage they just change subtle things but for the untrained eye it looked like the proper bag now I back on eBay searching checking reading all the counterfeit laws on eBay what you could and couldn't do checking all the laws I bought one of those Louis Vuitton bags I bought handbag yet yeah, walking down the street in fact I bought three different models without the Louis Vuitton name all the same colors look like them looks like them didn't have the copyright stuff I contacted eBay I remember sending them an email with the photographs description to their department and I got a message back saying this product is fine um, it has no copyright infringements on it although it is paying homage it is totally legal to sell that was music to my ears that one email I put these bags and I remember I paid 300 I bought three paid 300 or 350 each so 20 pound um, 75 bar so 50 50 yeah 20 about 20 pound then put it on eBay to the UK 
Now, it was a fair size, but it would squash up. So I knew the packaging was going to be a bit more. So I thought, I paid £5 each for these bags. 250 baht. My numbers are terrible some days. Yeah, it was about £5. So by the time we landed all the fees and everything, it was going to be about £10 a bag. So I put one on eBay and I put it on for a week and I started it at, I think, not being greedy, about £12.50. The bag sold for £35 and i would written in all the descriptions, this is not a replica, but, and I put all the photos, it's a homage and, I, and approved by eBay and I even put their email bits of it saying about it covered my yeah and it sold for about 35 pound amazed me absolutely amazed me but i'd found a product that was legal that was making good money of course gotta go and get more and then i started putting them on there for buy it now at 30 pound and they were selling and they started selling like hot cakes i just stuck to about three different variations every day buy it now people on some days i was selling five or six of these now that's fantastic i was making 100 200 pound a day on handbags legal handbags but the problem was i was having to go to the post office with all these i was having to box them all up that was getting a lot of work and also you start people start noticing you're carting loads of stuff backwards and forwards you've got to go and buy them bring them back package them and people notice that now the guy I got my work permit off I went and had a chat with him and said look I'm shipping these now at so many a day I'm having to box them up ship them all off he worked a price out for me for I could just drop the bags off to him and he had all these people working for him they would parcel them up box them up ship them and it would come from the shipping agent with the proper paperwork on for customs and i again put on there all the details on the shipping paperwork and he just printed them out once i'd written it once he printed it all out i put a uh, on the invoice about what it was and that it was a homage and it was not replica and I had proof and all the rest of it so for a two weeks I was they would I mean I was just on cloud nine it, it, it was ridiculous the amount of people buying I was getting no returns I was getting no complaints in fact people were coming back buying more then I started getting emails oh can you sell me ten of these can you sell me a hundred now I wanted I, I could have easily gone down the route and started shipping tens and hundreds but I knew as soon as I did that those people had fled the market and I, the money would be gone. I'd be making less money. Now, my shipping guy made an error. He shipped five the one day and he hadn't put the tickets on. Custom pulled them all. They didn't confiscate them. They all approved, but they all, by the time they boxed them all up, a few of them got damaged and I had to sort that out. So I stopped using the guy. I got the permit off. I thought, no, I'm going to have to go back to it. And then you think, Okay, I won't get greedy. I'm just gonna, without flooding the market, I'll just do one or two every day. It's making great income. And I started looking at the other handbags. So for you, the ladies, honestly, this area, loads of little shops. There must be 200 shops in just the one area off the side of Chinatown in Sampeng. Gucci bags. I started looking at those and there again was a homage without the G on it and all the things were changed. So I started having a go at the Gucci again. I fired an email to eBay checking again. Now they actually came back and said they didn't like one of the clasps that it was a bit could be classed as copyright. Luckily when I went back to the shop um, they had some slightly different which were okay. So I was getting permission from eBay these are homage they're okay it, it, and I started with the Gucci um, bags and there was another brand at the time Hello Kiss and had just started um, Prada 
equivalents. So there were stacks and I just for a period of maybe two months I was doing handbags but I was also it was so easy to go over there and buy the stuff and be back to my condo I ended up I thought no I'm just going to start learning all the other areas around there then at the end pick them up come back and that's where I started learning about the other side of the road and the back my god these videos just keep going on so quick there's so much to explain but the handbag section huge behind there was suitcases holdalls backpacks rucksacks now I never knew at the time there was so much difference in all these products but there was brands like Samsonite and things and again there were replicas there but then there was the homages that look identical but just slight different little subtle differences which made them legal but so big I thought I'm not even going to touch those but there is a market and the rucksacks huge market I never touched it but could have hold alls tons all behind the handbag section and then you're heading down towards the river and that's then there's the flower section down there where you wear flowers and there was the Bow Bay market where the huge amount of clothes came into and as you, I work my way up that side of the road so much more stuff so today's video lesson for you ladies handbags sampeng left hand side and we briefly mentioned sunglasses again if you go to Bangkok you want to buy presents for people you want the designer handbags the designer sunglasses go there Chinatown off to the left there's your lesson tip for today we'll move on to another product on the next one thanks for watching I hope this is uh, giving you some information or food for thought bye for now